Welcome to Epilogue Podcast, the show where we discuss some stuff that happened on a different show ages ago which nobody really cares about anymore. Hello, I'm Port Ponky. And I'm LeBlanc. Today, we're discussing Deep Space Nine, Season 7, Episode 10. It's only a paper moon. Unable to cope with his wartime experiences, Nog retreats into the world of Vic Fontaine. What did you think of this one? This episode explored an idea I've been wanting to see, and that's someone retreating into a hollow suite, because that would be so tempting if your life's not going so well why not go and make it as you want and so i i enjoyed this episode um it's an interesting idea i have quite a lot to say about this one i didn't think i would when i watched it but after thinking about it for a while there's a lot of things that uh not bother me but that i'd like to raise and yes that's one of them surely people live in hollow suites all the time the only thing I can think of is power consumption. Maybe it it's too much, and they, it's not reasonable to have people in a hollow suite twenty four. Well, they have twenty six hours, twenty six, and then however long a Bajoran week is, probably eight days. Seven to be. Oh, uh, they say seven. Eight. It's just seven, I think. Okay, so running twenty six seven, maybe it's not practical. Quark does object to the cost, but that's Quark, and he's a Frankie, and he's worried about profits. Yeah, Cisco pays for the power anyway. He gets that for free. But it is an occupied suite that he cannot rent out to anyone else. Yes, and it's his landlords that are occupying it. Something, something profit. Yeah, Um, pretty much. Star Trek is a scarcity-free society, though, so presumably on Earth, it's very easy to get a hollow suite. So everyone should live in a hollow suite. Uh, well, I don't know if everyone would, but there's lots of people nowadays that retreat into fantasy lives. They get lost in their hobbies or obsessed with certain things. Um. The Hollow Suite or Holodeck would only exacerbate that to the millionth degree. I just find it a little strange that they all talk about Nog retreating into the Hollow Suite as if no one's ever done that before. Yeah, that is strange. How how have they not heard of this happening? Well, yeah, there's an episode of Next Gen where Barkley spends too long in the Holodeck. And they all think he's weird, but that's also looked upon as kind of strange. I don't know. It it seems like it would be very common. So common that it would have its own chapter in any sort of psychology counseling book that's modern to the time, which is strange how Ezri doesn't know how to deal with this. It basically takes a hands-off approach. Ezri doesn't know anything. She has no idea. (laughs) This Okay, this is something that does actually bother me. The writers should have done a bit more research about what um, that kind of therapy is, because Esri is just awful. She's supposed to be awful. She's not supposed to be bad at it, she's just supposed to be not completely trained. But she is bad at it, I think. She laughs about her job, she says... Our counselor is supposed to cheer people up, or hey, it's time to talk about your feelings. These are <laughs> these are just cliches. This is not what uh, this kind of therapy is nowadays. And in four hundred years, I would hope it would have advanced significantly. It's lazy writing. It's the same with a lot of their courtroom dramas. They don't really learn about how the law might work or, or whatever. They just kind of make it sound how they think is good, and say, yep, that's good enough. 
it would work a lot better without her involved if she somehow were occupied and didn't know this was going on and then found out, oh, this is horrible. Why are you all handling this like this? That would probably be worse. That would be the curse of Dex being useless in the face of actually having an opportunity to do something. It's interesting you say she had a hands-off approach. Um, well, kind of. She did, did just sort of say, hey, let's just not bother doing anything because I have no idea what I'm doing. Maybe it'll sort itself out. Later on, though, she tries to find ways to force Nog out of the hollow suite. And she's laughing with Vic as if Vic's tricking him into feeling better. These, that's not hands-on. There's no sympathy there. She's not... She's treating his uh, recuperation... Or she's treating his recovery like a game. That's pretty disturbing. I didn't even think about it. I, don't, I wasn't very happy with what Esri was doing. That didn't matter. She's not the focal point of this episode. Um, and Nog and Vic were on top of their game. That's why I enjoyed this as much as I did. Esri's not a huge part of it. She's uh, a minor character in this. And they use Vic so well. It's It's great to hear this kind of music in a TV show. It's rare. I can't think of anything, any other show where you would see this sort of thing. And it's a sci-fi show, and they made him a recurring character. It wasn't just a one-off. It's a bold move that they made. This episode makes me wish that Vic had been in it longer. I wouldn't say that about every Vic episode, but this one certainly. <laughs> now, it's nice to have a location other than Quark's. I mean, it's a bit contrived, because he's inside Quark's cupboard, basically. But it's nice right. that there's another social gathering spot other than Quark's. I got that same feeling where I wanted Vic to be in more of Deep Space Nine, especially after it was revealed that Vic will be on all the time now. I thought, oh, that would have been great had they done that sooner. We're only, what, 15 episodes from the end? Perfect time to add in another character. <laughs> <laughs> this episode is kind of unique. I don't know if it's unique, unique, but it's odd because it heavily features or primarily features two recurring characters and no main cast. They've done so well with these characters that didn't even occur to me. It didn't feel like a lesser episode because of that. No, it's a good. It, I love what they tackled in this one. These characters, especially O'Brien, have been through so many things that would have left them broken, hollow shells of people. But they're always chipper and happy by the next episode. It's good to see someone go through some stuff. They got a brave face on, and then catch up with them later, and you realize, well, oh, oh, geez, you've been through some bad times. That's that's okay. There's no easy answer to this. Oh, right, you went through a traumatizing event. Got it. If Nog had just been fine the next time we saw him, I probably wouldn't have... Uh, we might have joked about on the podcast hey look he's all right but yeah no he should be messed up he, he lost his leg horribly i was really happy to see that they addressed it i expected them to kind of blow past it next time we see nog ah oh, yeah my leg's a little sore and then that's it here's some ointment and we're good yeah i'll just put a phase beam on you like nodule and you'll be right as rain it was 
a good good performance by Aaron Eisenberg. He played Nog so differently. It, from the first scene he shows up, you know, he's kind of broken. Yeah, it's obvious as soon as you see him. And I enjoyed the change in his temperament as his time in the Hollow Suite went on, how he was getting so wrapped up in his life in the Hollow Suite and how his mood was improving and he was getting in the swing of things. I almost don't want to do this, but it's fun to compare this Nog to season one Nog. Oh, gosh. Well, I don't want to linger on that because we've been over that so many times, but it's just a world of difference. Before he was slotted in just to fill time, it felt like, whereas now they're actually using him. I don't know why Hollow Suites aren't used for therapy more often. It seemed alien to all of them. They all said it sounded odd and claimed he was insane. It's a perfect tool for therapy. That's my biggest complaint with this episode. I don't understand why it's seen as bad to go into a hollow suite and live there for a bit. It reminds me of the whole replicated food versus real food thing. Um, well, if we can't taste the food, then to us it just seems kind of fussy. If they had enough power, surely everyone's, every room would be a hollow suite. I would hope so. They have limitless potential for uh, the betterment of society in just about every way can change the physical world around you at will. That must be very useful. <laughs> he was so happy in there. Why is that bad? It's got to be good for therapy. I mean, I don't, I'm no expert by any means, but... And I know I already ragged on Esri for saying counselling is just cheering people up, but it's got to be at least a good start having someone be happy and in a good mood generally all the time is probably going to help the healing process. But not just that, the entire concept of a hollow suite where you can mould reality and address whatever you want, create any scenario, run through anything, or avoid any scenario, it's got to be... I, I don't understand how, what uh, that kind of like psychotherapy or, or whatever it is. I, I don't understand what it is in Deep Space Nine if it's not using <laughs> a hollow suite. What else? What could be better than that? Talking about feelings? That's. Uh. And the ironic part is it's a hologram that gets him to talk about his feelings in the end anyway. <laughs> he warns him about becoming hollow, whatever he said. But it was him that helped Nog realize or helped discover his feelings or whatever. <laughs> he helped him heal. And it was through the Hollow Suite interacting with holograms, doing fake taxes. It I I struggle with the end message and then what we saw. In terms of the ending it did an annoying thing where after a stern conversation, everything is fine, which is kind of a trope. But in its favor, Vic's little monologue was actually pretty good. So I was happy enough with that. Especially his bit about you won't die all at once, but you'll die a little bit. That's a good line. You're mostly dead. And then you'll die all at once. And his outrageous puns on hologram and hollow. I don't know. Is that a pun? What's the etymology of hologram? I didn't even pick up on that. I, it's maybe not a pun, but it's kind of a pun. 
So the whole monologue was good, and it felt it felt good. If it had been not as well written, I would have been ripping into it. But yeah, he's a hologram, and he was the one that did the thing there. So is he not as real? I don't get it. What if Nog decided to live in that Hall of Suite, in that program forever? Why is that bad? Um... Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, what they would say is he's not living in the real world, despite the fact that the Hall of Suite is a thing in the real world. And they'd say, oh, he's living in a fantasy... But why does that matter? He's not shutting out his family. He enjoyed when uh, his father and his or his wife came and visited, and he Step- greeted them. Oh, stepmother! There we go. Uh, came and he greeted them, brought them to a table, showed off his competency in this new role. He was happy. I think that question is probably one that could have been the basis of an entire episode but yes it's well it's like if someone joins a cult and people are like oh no we've got to get them out of the cult because that's bad even if they're happy in the cult like Kira with the cats cult members but they were being exploited who who's benefiting no one's exploiting Nog if he decides to live in a hollow suite you could argue he's exploiting himself. That doesn't make yeah. any sense, though. He's taking, Nog is taking advantage of Nog. Yeah, he's throwing away old Nog in favor of Fantasyland Nog. Which is, I guess, the argument basically is that old Nog is better than Fantasyland Nog. And the reason that that sounds good is because they... They all look down on Fantasyland Nog. They look down on it, on living in a hollow suite. Would you live in a hollow suite? Sure, why not? <laughs> I don't think I would. Well, I, I might have a nicer house and stuff, but I would certainly play in a hollow suite more than enough. But I don't think I'd live in one. But if you would, I, yeah, totally. That's fair enough. I, I won't criticize that choice because I don't think it's right to criticize it. <laughs> Lots of people have fantasy stuff that they get lost in. E.g., religion is quite fantasy esque. Uh, that sounds a little bit belittling, but hopefully you see what I mean. Yeah, I get it. How did you describe? their time it's scarcity free the star trek society is supposed to be post scarcity okay so and as a member of a post scarcity society what am i i wouldn't feel guilty about living in a hollow suite because i can't contribute ah <laughs> i don't know post scarcity is really weird and complicated um, a lot of people try and say, oh, well, maybe power is the the resource. But that can't be the case. It's specifically supposed to be, there's nothing, no scarcity. Every, everything you could want, you can have, kind of, within reason. So if you choose to contribute nothing, that's fine, because um, there's enough to go around regardless. What if a hollow suite allows me to become my best self? I'm supposed to deny that uh, from myself because of societal norms? Well, yeah, what if you have a serial killer or something and just stick him in a hollow suite? Is that humane? Is that okay? Seems good to me. Yeah, they're in a tiny room, uh, a reasonably tiny room. And no one is dying. Yeah, I mean, I haven't thought about it deeply, but on the surface, that seems like a pretty good plan. No one has to die. No one has to suffer. So if it would be okay for a serial killer, what about a regular Joe who's just unhappy? 
but obviously they would be allowed to leave <laughs> in, that, in that scenario. No, you have to stay and be happy. <laughs> oh, one thing that popped in my head while watching this. Vic mentions how he's never been able to run this long. And I thought, oh, that'd be kind of cool to see limitations of the program. As if the programmer didn't anticipate such a long runtime. And so th there was a shot of them reading the newspaper. Maybe it's the same newspaper or something like that. It just got to the end of what it has and keeps repeating. But then I thought, well, for all the little incidental things in Holosuite programs, it probably pulls from a shared network and can fill in those gaps easily. But still, I wanted to see something. Uh, uh, well, all this stuff would be worked out. So any sort of limitation wouldn't be there. Yeah, I imagine it uses a large uh, res sort of data bank of assets and some procedural generation to fill in the gaps or, or whatever. There doesn't seem to be a limit because they were traveling around within Vic's city outside the hotel. Yeah, but I'm, I'm sure it fills in as it needs to. It might be nice to see Vic's casino going horribly wrong. <laughs> because they left it running too long. <laughs> it's a strange idea for, for an episode. I liked how at the end, when Vic switches himself off and O'Brien says he's a special super hologram with bells and whistles, Nog asks if he has free will, and O'Brien just says, I'm an engineer, not a philosopher, which is, by the way, a uh, repeating line. I've noticed. I, I'm a doctor, not a whatever, from original series. But yeah, that's a suave way for them to skip over that point. It's a perfect use of that line. Hey, we don't really want to address this. Let's skirt past it and appease uh, longtime fans in, in the same sentence. It's good because, yeah, I buy it. O'Brien doesn't know the answer. And now it's been raised... Everyone knows that no one knows, and that's it. The, the issue is laid to rest. Does Vic have free will? The only place that question will exist is on the internet message boards <laughs> and long-winded arguments. They handled it well. I just wish they'd used that kind of explanation in the right context more often. They all often use overly wordy or labored or confusing explanations for things when it's fine to just say, well, I don't know. A healthy mix would be good. It was good if the viewer knows the rules of the things, but it's also fine if someone just turns up and says, well, this is all basically magic, so <laughs> I guess we'll find out. If Vic does have free will, though, isn't he a life form? Isn't shutting him off a crime? No, because that's not killing him. It's like forcing him to go to sleep. You can't chloroform someone. Oh, wait. Uh, yeah, okay. Wait, if he's a life form uh, that they synthesized, doesn't that make the whole concept of what is life very mixed up and confusing? Yes, it does. Oh, okay. I'm glad O'Brien just hand waved past that whole discussion. <laughs> and Nog is just like, yeah, sure, fine. He's got kind of maybe free will, like, yeah, whatever. We could all be holograms ourselves. Who cares? Bye, see ya. <laughs> it's like they opened a philosophical can of worms, but it wasn't a can, it was Tupperware. And as soon as they peeled back the <laughs> lids, they went, no, 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 close that one. Back in See the cupboard. See how it back up. Make sure it burps. Can I be very picky about a line? Some might uh, say needlessly picking. Yes. Nog complains that other people complain to him that his pain is all in his head. All pain is in your head. 
Yes, exactly. Pain is conceptualized in the brain as all feelings and experiences are. Not for a Ferengi. Well, yes, for a Ferengi. Ah, uh, okay. So the fact that pain receptors are not firing is very meaningless. Well, it's not meaningless, but that's a piece of diagnostic evidence, but that definitely doesn't mean you should dismiss it. I mean, he went through an amputation. Phantom limb pain is a real and serious problem. I expected someone to bring that up and also for someone to use the word psychosomatic. I don't know how they resisted using that <laughs> word, that, that fun word. But I guess they have more restraint than I do. I was 100% on Nog's side. That is so stupid of them to dismiss something because he is only experiencing it in his brain. Get over it, you big baby. <laughs> it's just in your brain. You're just perceiving the world wrong. <laughs> You're just a crazy one-legged man. It's no wonder that Esri is such a terrible therapist if this is the standard at which medicine has degraded to. Maybe all medical technique was wiped out and they had to start from the beginning. Uh, they do that every day, actually. Every Monday morning, start of the week, they wipe everything. Relearn medicine from scratch. Okay, so most medical procedures are automated. You just kind of point a little device thing at the area, and then it's healed. So they all forgot how to do anything beyond physical. Have you seen House, MD? I have not. Okay, it's a lot like this episode, really. And that's... House tries to heal a Ferengi? No, it's, his leg hurts. Okay. All the time. And no one, everyone tells him it's in his head? Yeah, all the time. And he's addicted to, uh, uh, like, prescription painkillers and stuff because of it. So Nog is about to become addicted to painkillers. Hollow sweets. Hollow sweet pills. No, just he's addicted to the hollow sweet. Oh, okay. Never mind. No, I got it. It's good. Yep. Paris is pretty good, but this isn't house. Anyway. Do you have some hollow words of wisdom from the show? You've got to play the cards life deals you. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose, but at least you're in the game. It's that kind of talk that makes me like Vic as a character. He has really good dialogue and smooth delivery. I think his dialogue is actually quite cheesy in a lot of ways. But, but it's supposed it should be. Yeah, because, because of the him, era. Coming from... Uh, J James Darren, is that the actor? Yeah, it, he pulls it off. It's smooth when he does it. It's also just refreshing because we're so used to the techno battle and seriousness of Deep Space Nine. I also have a soft spot for quotes like that about, you know, life being a game or a stage or a play or a, a whatever. Life metaphors. They can become cliche and lose their impact, but this is Vic we're talking about, and it's a metaphor that involves a casino game. He works at a casino. It all wraps up nicely. I bet, uh, I bet Nog wishes Vic was his dad. <laughs> what? I'm <I've> welcome <laughs> that. <laughs> what if he told him that? Vic, I wish you were my dad. And then Rom was right there. <laughs> uh, dog? Rom would be okay with it. He's a very understanding father. Oh, <laughs> uh, that makes sense. Yeah, Vic's got a whole casino. He's got business. And they went in together on the new casino, like father and son? Yeah. And Nog could change his name to Nog Fontaine. <laughs> <laughs> And Vic gave him lady advice, I assume? Oh, probably. Vic could have stopped him. 
<laughs> There's a whole episode about um, a hologram trying to adopt and whether a hologram has legal rights. Yeah, he has to fight for his right to be recognized as a life form. He has free will, why not? He should be able to a top knock. <laughs> well, is that a, get, Rome is still there. You can, uh, I don't know, isn't, can't you be emancipated? Yeah, it, I think adult adoption happens quite a lot in Japan. Sorry I've heard. Anyway, we should probably move on to the next episode. Yeah, I, I think that's a good idea, daddy -o. Don't get me started again. Let's, let's move on. All right.